Hey guys, Dean here. Shopify dropshipping can be extremely frustrating, especially when you're creating your own store for the very first time. You're gonna go through a ton of trial and error and you're probably gonna spend almost all of your starting budget just testing out products which may or may not fail and trying to find that first winning product. That's the problem and the hurdle which a lot of people run over. Now, in this video, I'm gonna show you some of the worst products and the worst product types which you can start dropshipping and why you shouldn't be selling them. Hopefully, this will save you guys a ton of money and cut through a lot of those first mistakes you're going to make by watching these tips. Definitely avoid these products because it's going to save you a ton of time and money. So the first one is furniture items. So reselling furniture and repurposing it or cleaning it up and repairing it can actually be a pretty good business. I know from YouTube I've watched a lot of videos where people buy old or used furniture, clean it up with cleaning supplies and make it look a lot more pleasant and then they sell it and mark it up for a profit. And they can make a little bit of profit per one and they buy them on websites like like Craigslist for an example, eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and that can be quite a good business model. But buying and selling furniture via a dropshipping business is a pretty terrible idea. So let me tell you why. If you want to start a brand, sure, you could start selling furniture, right? But we're talking about the dropship space. The reason why furniture is a really terrible one for dropshipping, I shouldn't really have to explain this, but it's way too heavy for the very cheap shipping methods, which is where you're gonna be making your profit because you wanna save money on the shipping methods in dropshipping and you want to try and make a profit off marking up the items, right? You don't wanna increase the cost value on the shipping for start, that's really bad. And this causes size and weight restrictions because furniture pieces are extremely heavy. It's not like you're shipping some kind of fancy necklace or some viral item, which is really light. It just doesn't work out, trust me. Then we have electric guitars. So this is kind of like a weight issue again, but this is just generally instruments as a whole or heavy instruments because guitars to source wholesale for a start can actually be quite expensive. Usually it's gonna go over at least the $100 mark for a new one or a decent quality one, which is gonna sell, which is not really a good ballpark range for beginners who are just getting into dropshipping. I also think the price is already too high to buy a guitar to start off with to add on an additional amount to make it worthwhile and make a decent profit off flipping it. So I think it's a really bad product to actually sell. Now we're using guitars as an example. This applies to most instruments, but especially electric guitars. The profit is not really there. It's too heavy to ship and it's just impossible to sell, especially because it's not really a unique item. Just think about it. There's always those people that you come across and it's always your friends or family when you go into your friend's house every single person has a guitar which they don't play or use it's not a unique item everyone already has one and they'll just go to the music store and buy one if they need one so it's definitely one of the worst products i think you could sell in a dropshipping store then the next one is generic clothing so this might not apply to you if you're creating some kind of private label brand or if you're creating some kind of brand designed around a clothing fashion line but this only seems to work with people who are influenced influencers, people who already have an influence, or who brand and then design their shirts or clothes to look like something unique, right? We're talking about generic clothing. So generic products that are not very appealing, like generic colored shirts that people could buy anywhere or that they don't really feel like they should buy because it's not very special. Remember, even if the shirts are pretty cool, like for an example, I had some Shopify video a few days ago where I showed that there was an anime shirt, which was a so-called winning product, but I don't really think it was going to sell regardless of it being a fan shirt. Plus, there's already really established clothing brands and clothing lines which are going to undercut you and offer them for much cheaper. For an example, I could go on Amazon right now and order clothes for super cheap with completely free prime shipping. Okay, and I could do that in an instant and it can come tomorrow. That's the kind of the services which you're competing against with really basic products. I could also go into town right now and go to a clothing store and get a shirt for like five pounds, which is probably like seven dollars for a really cheap price instantly, right? So the profit just isn't there on generic items. If you're making a branded clothing line with custom designs, now that's a completely different story. But if you drop shipping generic clothing and fashion pieces, it's not a really good idea on a drop shipping store unless that clothing is a unique item or it's based around your actual store brand as a whole, which has some kind of identity to it. Clothing and fashion niche based stores benefit off trading clothing items or selling flashy items that are unique. So generic items are just not really sellable in my opinion. Then the next one is counterfeit products. I don't really think I have to explain this, but let me give you the reason why you shouldn't be selling counterfeit products because I've been seeing people sell things like fake shoes and fake items on Instagram and you may run into problems. Even if you sell 
sell in your own Shopify store. This is because fake designer clothes or fake designer shoes, for an example, fake Jordans or fake Yeezys, cannot be promoted on social media for a start. It's against their terms of service, right? It poses a legal problem only to you as a seller because the way that you're actually obtaining them, which is usually from China, they are the only ones that can kind of get away with it and skirt past the legal regulations because in their country, it doesn't really have that as an issue, right? So when you buy them from China, if you try and resell them in the West, you're going to run into legal problems and you can get sued for it, which is a problem. And if you would just go and buy some, you probably wouldn't run into any issues, right? But if you're selling them, that's a copyright problem. And then you become the person selling them rather than the consumer. So you can definitely be sued or charged when doing that. Also, remember most counterfeit products, unless you pay a decent amount for like one-to-one -one quality versions or replicas, they're always going to be low quality. So low quality counterfeit products, they usually leave the customers with some kind of discontent and disappointed, especially if you misbrand them or mislabel them and lie and say that they're genuine and they find out that they're not, which will lead to bad store reviews, people complaining, possibly a louder message and number of complaints which also could then make it more likely for you to get into legal problems. So it's just a bad circle and I won't recommend jumping on that. Even through Instagram, trying to do it low key, I really don't recommend trying to sell fake shoes and counterfeit products like that. It's just not worth it in the long run. It's best to rebrand brandable shoes or things that you can put logos on or get some kind of manufacturer later if you want to create your own shoes or sell cool shoes. You could, however, also, instead of selling counterfeit shoes, a different alternative would be, I wouldn't say for drop shipping, but like, an e-com store you could buy real shoes like real nike shoes and then customize them with custom logos and branding on paints and designs and then sell them on ebay or something like that which would be legal it's best to do it the right way when selling these products next we have household essentials so just be honest here basic items we're talking kitchen utensils dishes handkerchiefs and tissues items that are less personal and can be bought cheaper elsewhere at the supermarket or instantly on Amazon is something which I wouldn't really recommend selling because these items are usually more essential and people need them very quickly so you can't really benefit from those shipping times which are typical from drop shipping stores. Customers don't want to wait weeks on end or one week even to get something which they need urgently to use for the household or for themselves right. So these kind of common basic household essentials that people can already buy for super cheap instantly from the store is just not worth stocking at all. Just generally things that people need fast that they're not going to wait or they're going to be impatient for is just not recommended to sell anyway. Then we have dangerous goods. So this is kind of a blanket category. This includes products like kitchen knives or blades that could be used for the wrong purposes. These could be used as weapons or for dangerous purposes and you don't want to be liable for how your customers use the product that they bought from your store. So this could put your store at risk or the blame or some kind of legal action if anything happens with a product products purchased from your store, okay? You could have problems with customs also when shipping these items like sharp blades or pointed items or items that go through a metal detector, which causes you shipping issues. They might be held at customs and they might not arrive to your customer and then you'll get complaints and then you'll have to refund more. And also if it's not a legal item that you're shipping or if you need some kind of license or you haven't read the certain country of destinations laws where you're actually selling it, you could also run into bad issues as well. So I wouldn't recommend selling any kind of blades or dangerous goods unless you know legally that you can sell them and you have a license. The next category is supplements. So this is mainly because you don't know the ingredients within some kind of pill or a supplement. You only have what's on the label. Now, most generic supplements out there online are not FDA approved. They weren't developed in America. Most of them are these generic Chinese supplements or so-called herbal supplements, and you don't really know what are in them. The label could also be lying too if they haven't gone through regulation. There's even pretty bad regulation in America for supplements. Even if they're FDA approved, you do find supplements which are not very good quality, even America. So if you're buying supplements from China, I think that they could definitely be pretty dangerous to deal with. These supplements mostly aren't FDA checked or approved. That's the Food and Drug Administration. And they're also not checked by a health agency. So they could include trace amounts of dangerous elements or ingredients, for an example. People could also have health issues or reactions to them. If they're allergic or if the product contains something bad which is being cut with, you just don't know this because you haven't seen it being produced itself. One example, let's talk about big pharma and the health industry, the Johnson & Johnson baby powder. Years later, they found there was trace amounts of asbestos in it, which was causing people to get sick or get cancer. Allegedly, that was reported, allegedly. Another example, 
is certain shady fat loss supplements which have been purchased online and people didn't know that these contain certain thermogenic compounds and they actually ended up killing people so you need to be really careful here with supplements and things you buy online especially when you sell them to customers and you don't actually know the safety behind them then talking about safety we also move on to safety equipment so this is a very similar thing this is just considering your consumers well-being in mind and just the fact that you can't check these so this includes helmets mouth guards eye protection shoulder and knee protection if the gear which you're selling doesn't hold up when a buyer has some kind of accident or potentially gets injured when they're wearing them or fatally injured which hopefully they don't you could be sued for having a faulty product or misadvertising that it has that level of protection and it doesn't hold up unless you personally know that there's been rigorous testing behind the product and some kind of validation or certification of the safety grade of the product that you're selling avoid the risk entirely of selling them because it's not worth it and that leads me on to waterproof items so you see all these specialized waterproof items right this includes phone cases which claim to be waterproof things that can be submerged these items are bought when people want to go on holiday swimming and they want to keep the phone with them or they want to kind of have fun and experiment or even use the phone in the bath i guess basically some of these products don't actually end up being waterproof or fully waterproof or they are only waterproof at very low depths you don't usually know how long they can actually be submerged in water for and how deep it can go before they become ineffective so this also leads to the risk of people's things getting damaged for an example if a customer that bought from your store breaks their phone or a device you could have a problem whether it's a complaint and you need to refund them or a complaint where they want to claim the cost of their phone damage from you this is another one of those products that without personal testing you have to be very careful with now i think this could be a possible exception if you order the product yourself and do some kind of personal rigorous testing with it with your own devices that would probably be the only way that you could have the peace of mind to actually know that you can sell it but otherwise i would just avoid this and that leads to the last and the tenth one of these products which i don't recommend selling this is general food items food can perish especially with the long shipping times that drop shipping usually has okay you don't usually know what's in it or if they can maintain and not go bad during transit food also needs special handling and packaging too to make sure they don't leak they don't go off and they don't go stale so this is also another logistics nightmare that you're going to run into when shipping food items crisps and food that you buy off amazon if anyone's ever done that or if they've bought food items from like american sweet stores or foreign food stores online for example most of us have received items that have been punctured or leaked and it's always upsetting when you receive them because you feel like you've wasted money it took so long to come it's just not very good for the customer experience avoid selling this type of item if possible and it's another item that people can already get from from supermarkets for much cheaper unless you're selling foreign foods that people can't get in the demographics country that you're marketing your product to right this could be i'm selling american sweets to europe through the store that they can't get in their country that would be an exception but if you are selling food items and you're dead on selling them and you don't want to listen to that advice then you could sell certain items which have very long shelf lives and can be preserved for very long amounts of time like sweets for an example because crisps leak and they and they get broken up into little pieces but if you sell things like lollies or sweet items that may be solid and can't get damaged or go off in delivery maybe that can be sustainable but for the most part i don't really recommend selling food items on a drop shipping store it's a pretty terrible idea so that concludes the top 10 worst products and product categories that you should stay away from and steer clear of when selling on a shopify drop shipping store or a general drop shipping store hopefully this will save you a lot of money to avoid these categories and avoid potential legal issues and wasted time with products just simply not working or not being unique enough to sell and market. If you want more Shopify dropshipping videos and general business videos and travel videos, make sure to give the video a like if it was valuable and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.